All right, guys, so in the last video, we made it so that we could hash our passwords before um, submitting a user. Now we're going to work on the login. So this is the, the passportjs.org documentation. And if we scroll down here, I just want to, let's see, I want this right here. So we need to create an app.post to the login route. And we're going to include some of these options. So I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to go down here. Let's see. We want to go after the register. So right here. And I'm going to paste this in. Let's add a comment. We'll say login post. And what we're doing is we're using the slash login route. And then we're saying passport.authenticate. And then including a couple things there. Okay, We're, we're saying that we want to use a local strategy. And then we have a success redirect, which um, we're going to keep as slash the index page. And then failure redirect, we want that to go to users slash login. All right. And then failure flash is set to true, but we're actually going to change it to a message that we want to be displayed if there's a failure. So we just want to say invalid username or password. All right, and then we should have a function. So let's go right here. Um, I'm sorry, right here after this uh, parentheses. And then we'll say function. Okay, and then that function is going to take request and response. And then in there, we'll do a console log. We'll say auth successful. Okay, and then let's do, uh, let's see, we'll just do a redirect to the index page or slash. All right, that looks good. You know what? I'm going to put this function on the next line. It looks a little weird. So now what we want to do is create the local strategy. Okay, we're telling it we want a local strategy, but we didn't create it yet. So let's go right above it. And we're going to say passport.use. And we're going to pass into it new local strategy. And I'm going to go like that. And then in here, we'll say function. And this is going to take in a couple things. It's going to take in username, password, and then done. All right, and what we need to do here is reach into our database and grab a user by their username. So we can do that with db.users.find1. Okay, it's a MongoJS method. And we want to pass in our query, which is going to be we want username by the username that's passed in. All right, and then we're going to have a function. That'll take in error and user. And we'll check for the error first. We'll say if error, then we want to just return. Actually, let's put that on a new line. We'll say return done. But we want to just pass in error. All right, then we want to check for the user. So we'll say if. Actually, we're going to say if no user, then we're going to return done. Okay, we want to pass in a few things here. We're going to pass in null, false, and then a message like that. Okay, so the message will be incorrect username. Okay. 
Now, if there is a, if there's no error and there is a user, then we're going to keep on going, and we want to uh, we want to use bcrypt here to uh, to match the hash. Okay, so we're going to say bcrypt dot compare, and then we want to pass in password password that we enter, and also the password of the user that was found up here. All right, and then we'll have our function. Okay, and that'll take in error, and then and then the next one will be either a true or false, and I'm just going to call it is match. So if it, there is a match, it'll be true. If there's not, it'll be false. All right. First of all, we'll check for the error, and if there's no error, we're going to check for the is match. If is match, then we'll say return done. Pass in null and also pass in the user. Else, if there isn't a match, then we're going to return. Actually, I'll just grab what we did up here. Okay, except this one will be incorrect password. All right, so it's not it's not too difficult to really see what's going on here. We're taking the username and password that we pass into the form. We're going to call find one to match the username. If there isn't a username by that name, we're going to get this error. If there is, then it's going to keep going and it's going to run the password through this bcrypt compare so it can compare the hashed passwords. If it does match, we're going to return done along with the user object. If it doesn't, we're just going to return done with the error incorrect password. So that's what this strategy does. All right. Now there's a couple other things we need to do for a passport. We need to serialize and deserialize the user uh, because we want to be able to access that user information when they're logged in. So let me see where that is. Right here. I'll grab these two, and we're going to have to change them up a little bit. All right, so we have serialize user function. Use actually this serialize. We don't have to change too much. Um, what we do want to do is set user dot underscore ID because since we're using MongoDB, it uses an underscore ID field. All right, so we'll do that, and then in deserialize user, we're going to have to. Um, we can't use find by ID because that's not part of MongoJS. Um, I think that's part of Mongoose. So we're going to. Uh, we'll just get rid of that. And we'll redo it. So we'll say db. Dot users. Dot find one. Okay, and then in here we're going to pass in underscore ID. And then we're going to take this ID, but MongoDB stores object IDs, so we have to wrap our ID in MongoJS dot object ID, and then we'll pass in the ID. All right, and then we'll have a second parameter of function. Okay, that'll take in error and user, and then what we want to do is call done and pass in error and user. All right, and that should do it. Now let's save that, and we're going to go to our login EJS, and we want to be able to get messages sent from that from uh, Passport. So we're going to go right above the form. Oops. And we're going to add in less than percent dash and then messages. Just like that. And that should output the messages. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's see what happens if we go. Oh, we're getting an error. 
Let's see, app is not defined. Oh. Um, yeah, this shouldn't be app.post, that should be router.post. Okay, so let's go to slash users slash login. And if we were to just type anything, okay, that should give us an error. Let's see if we're getting anything in the console. No. Uh, oh, we didn't set the action. So in login EJS, we're going to go up here in the uh, form tag. And let's say method is post action is going to be slash users slash login. All right, so we get invalid username or password. Now I want this to look a little better and I can't figure out how to make the messages, how to how to um, wrap it in a custom div and use the bootstrap classes. So what, I, what I've been doing when I use this is if we look at this, it has a div ID messages and then a UL with the class of error. So I'm going to add my own CSS to make that look better. Okay, so we're going to go to the bottom here. And I'm going to paste in a couple things here. So this is for the error, basically just formatting it like a uh, bootstrap alert. Okay, we're going to give it a red background and stuff. And then the success will have a green background. All right, so if we save that and then we try that again, you can see now it's formatted nicely. All right, so let's go ahead and try the correct username, but the wrong password. Okay, so it's still not going to let us. Now let's try the correct username with the right password. And it works. So we're just about there. What we want to do now in the next video is we want to, be, we want to add some access control. We don't want to be able to come to this page unless we're logged in. We also want to display the user's name and also create the logout function. All right, so that's what we'll do next.